hello. And one more hello. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Marcus, and here you are listening to me at Spill It. Spill It is a show where I get to speak to inspirational people about their inspirational stories and bring more and more people into the Spill It community. And this episode is no different. Every single episode, we have three different principles, three pillars that I like to call. We want to connect people together. We want to inspire people. And we all want to learn something. Every day is a school day. And I would like to think that I know absolutely everything, but I definitely don't know everything. And today, I'm going to be learning a hell of a lot. A hell of a lot. And I can't wait for it. Because today is episode 38, The Endo Warrior. And Alexandra will be joining us at 7.15 p.m. Until then. You have got my beautiful company to entertain you, to talk about competitions, to talk about events around the world, whatever you want to talk about. So make sure that before Alexandra comes on, you have, you, you guys have liked, you've shared, and you've commented, especially commenting, because when you get to comment, when you comment, I get to do things like this. Where Linda has come in and say, morning teapot hose. Morning, Linda. Thank you so much for jumping in. I keep forgetting to call you all teapots, uh, teacups. I keep I keep think, thinking to myself, right, every single beginning part of the episode, I'm going to go, hi, teacups. It's here. It's, uh, you're here. It's Marcus and blah, blah, blah. And then I keep forgetting. I just keep going, hello, hello, hello. Um, so hello, teacups out there. Linda, hi Debbie. Debbie, Deborah's here. Hello, Emmy's here, saying hello as well. Guys, keep those comments rolling through. I absolutely love it. <sighs> Do it, but mainly as well. Don't forget to like. So like this stream right now, and don't forget to share it as well. This is going to be a story that needs to be told, and I'm expecting nothing more than a little bit of a share from you guys. <sighs> If you haven't checked out all the episodes yet, make sure you do. You can head over to the Facebook page or the Facebook hub, as I call it. I mean, we stream over to Twitch and we stream over to YouTube as well. But you can head over to either Facebook, YouTube or Twitch and you can watch our other episodes. Or you can now play back all of our episodes over on your favorite podcasting streaming service, such as Spotify, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. And also, if you'd like to come on the show, then you're more than welcome to. You know, all you have to do is get in touch. Let me know. And let me know what you want to come on to the show and talk about. And I can guarantee that you can come on the show and talk about it. It is as simple as that. Because this isn't just my show. This is your show. This is our community. And it's a community that we've built together. So it's as much as your show as it is mine. So if you do want to come on, make sure you, uh, make sure you get in touch. Keep those com comments and questions rolling in it is important and don't forget to hit that share button arizona tuned in oh i know yes uh, uh deborah is from arizona i remember from uh last night's stream on dance x thank you so much danielle is here hi danielle i knew that you'd be joining on for this episode i can't wait to get into the nitty-gritty of it and i'm sure that you know you you can't wait for our special guest to come on and start talking about everything can't wait can't wait can't wait it's announcements times, guys. It's announcements. I have got some announcements for you. We're going to start low. We're going to start low. Not low as in negative. We're going to start low with, like, political stuff. <laughs> so we're going to start low. And then we're going to end up high. Okay? So we're going to go low. And then the humor is going to take over. And then we're going to end up on a high. Here we go, then. Announcements. There is a little bit of a... There's a guy who pip has joined hi i'm new no worries pip nice is nice of you to come in to the spillet community to the spillet hold here come and say hi we're all a friend friendly bunch you can drop a comment all you want to hi thank you so much for joining keep these comments rolling in and keep saying hello and guys in the comments you can talk to each other as well and all help each other it's going to be really really cool michael from barbados is watching hi michael hope you're okay thank you so much for joining Okay, let's get back to these announcements. So there's a, there's a guy that's been uh, causing quite a bit of a stir in the media recently, over the over this week, part of last week as well, actually. He's been causing so much um, of an issue, and I really wanted to put my two cents in it, in it, 
<laughs> in it. <laughs> I wanted to put. I wanted to have a chat with you guys about my opinions on this specific person in the media. So we are going to get a little bit, a little bit um, political. Okay. So this little guy here has been causing quite a stir. Here he is. It's Mr. Potato Head. Now, Mr. Potato Head has been in the media quite a lot recently. And the reason for him is because Hasbro released a statement that they were going to drop the name uh, Mr. Potato Head and just call him Potato Head. This caused an absolute uproar in the media where people were like, oh, my God, he's like got no gender and he's been the same for 70 years and blah, blah, blah. And how dare you take this Mr. away from us? And I mean, come on, it's a potato. It is a potato. You're arguing over a potato. And a potato head, it's a toy that you've probably not even thought of for 30, 40 years of your life. And now, because of the fact that they're dropping the Mr., it's all a big hoo-ha. And it's not even as bad as what people think. Bottom line is, right, Hasbro wanted to drop the Mr. from the potato head thing because they wanted to open up and be more inclusive of people. Now, imagine being a little boy or a little girl or however you, the, the child wants to identify. And they have got same-sex parents, okay? How many toys are out there that would deal with same-sex parents? How many toys have, like can create a family with two, two males or two females as parents or however they want to identify? We'll go with the, the sexes, so we'll go with the male and the female. How many parents, how many toys or toy companies have done something to be more inclusive of LGBTQ plus uh, families? Now, what the Potato Head family has, has been able to ultimately do is that you can now create your own LGBTQ plus, plus family. And I think that's an absolutely epic thing. And people need to wake up and realize, firstly, it's a potato. And secondly, it's about inclusivity. It's not about taking something away. It's, and by the way, it's not, it's not that Mr. Potato Head is gone. It's just from the branding. So then it's a potato head family. So it's basically like an umbrella, an umbrella of potato heads. And then underneath the potato head umbrella, you've got Mr., Mrs., you've got baby, teenager, uh, whatever, emo, <laughs> whatever it is, you've got all of these different potatoes that are under the potato head umbrella. So no, your potato hasn't changed genders. Your potato is still a potato. And it's just there to include other families. And I just think that that is such a remarkable thing to do from a toy company. Now, there is a little video. It's a bit of an educational video. And I find it's absolutely hilarious. I saw it on TikTok. And I'm going to post it for you guys now. Um, and I'm going to talk about the creator of this. I just think it's absolutely genius. But here you go. Here is the video that I saw on TikTok. It's so funny, but really educational. Here we go. Would you like to talk about science? So this happened. Which has many conservatives incredibly upset. You can't take away our favorite potato's gender. And they're right. You can't, cause he's a potato. And potatoes are self-pollinating, which means they have both male and female reproductive attributes, which sounds very exciting, if not saucy. I'm jealous of a potato. Potatoes are non-binary. So if you're gonna be angry about that, you're gonna be angry a long time. All I hear when you say things like this is... When I get involved with the gender expression of a vegetable, I make sure it's scientifically inaccurate. Happy Pride, potato friends! <laughs> <laughs> Happy Pride, potato heads. Happy Pride. So calm down, you potatoes out there. Calm down. That... TikToker, she's an absolutely amazing creator. She is actually here in the UK as well. And I am trying so hard to get her on the show. It's unbelievable. But if you wanted to follow her and see some of her hilariously funny educational TikToks or over on her Instagram, then you can do. Uh, I put the handle there is at Chelsea Hart is me. Um, she's so funny and so educational. Please do that. Please head over there and support her. I think it's, I think it's, it's amazing to be fair. Did you not find my vids as you requested last week funny? I did find your vids. Uh, it's just that that's for a new section, Linda, that will be starting in season two. <laughs> Thank you for that, though. Thank you. I am compiling all these videos together. Don't you worry. Right. Moving on for our second announcement. You may have seen a post that I po uh, put out uh, a couple of days ago. Yesterday, I think it was, actually. www.spillit.uk is the official 
official website of Spill It. Oh, my life. I cannot believe it. Spill It has its own website. Okay, so it's not like that I'm going to be streaming via that website. I mean, who knows what the future holds. But right now, it's a landing page for all of your Spill It needs and everything. We're going to go through some of the things that are on there at the moment. You've got, obviously, everything about what Spill It is on this section as well. You can help support me by becoming an official Spill It Patreon as well. So I have now got a Spill It Patreon account where you get bonus features, you get bonus episodes, you get discounts off my merch, everything. So that is now officially up there as well. You've got, oh, look at that. Alexandra's there. But you have got the upcoming episodes. So you have these little tabs that you can scroll through and you can see who's who and what the episode is going to be about. And also there is, if I just get rid of that banner there, uh, not that one. We want to get rid of this one. You will see a connect with guest button. And if you click that, it will take you directly to the best contact for that guest so if you like any of the episodes or you like the guest then you can go onto the website you can click connect with guests and you can get in touch with them i think that's absolutely epic you've also then got the links to all the podcast sites where you can stream on uh, on the go and then also you've got the merch available as well which is under construction because I'm waiting for my merch to actually arrive but yeah once that's once that's actually arrived you'll be able to go onto there you'll be able to buy merch and then also you've got the contact us section where you'll be able to call and email everything to do with Spill It. If you wanted to come on the show, you want to give feedback, all of that lot. Yeah, so, so cool. And I cannot wait. Right. Moving swiftly on, we have got the competition. It is competition time. Thank you so much to absolutely everybody who participated in the February competition where you just drew your Spill It artwork. I have got them printed. They are going to be up and ready to stream. Um, however, I'm going to put them up for the start of season two of Spill It, which will be starting in May. I'm expecting more, loads more to come through. A few other people were saying, oh, I, just, I ran out of time and I got really busy. And that's fine. Keep sending me all of your artwork. And it's all going to go on this wall behind me so people can see their own artwork on the show. And the competition winner will be announced to, uh, through April, will they? And they will get their logo or their artwork put on a T-shirt and sent to them as well. So I can't wait for that, and it's going to be so so cool. Anyway, this month's competition dead dead easy. You guys wanted something like January, January challenge where you had to run the fifty k, and here it is. We're come, we're bringing something similar back. It is the Spill It March competition. It's March for March. So all you have to do is walk 300 steps, which is less than 10,000 a day. Do 300 steps throughout March to win yourself a medal and a chance to win some Spill It merch. It is as easy, as easy as that. So 300 steps, you can walk up and down the stairs. You can run around your house. You don't even have to leave your house. Do you know what I mean? It's awesome. So if you're wanting to get involved with that, all you have to do is send me an email with your updates, marcus at spillit.uk, and that will get you in the running, ready to get your merch and obviously to get your medal. Anybody that completes it gets a medal. Anybody. Anybody that completes it gets a medal. It's just one person will win the merch. So there you go. And that's it. Right. I have talked and talked and talked. We are now 1917. It is that time. There's plenty of people watching, ready, ready, like Pip, for example. Pip, I have endometriosis, so I had to watch this. And we had to get you on, obviously. I, I can't wait for you to, to, to get involved with this and ask all your questions. So there are people watching. This is going to be an episode about endometriosis. It's going to be a very educational episode, especially for me, because I need to know more about it. Here we go. It is. Can we get loads of emojis, please? Can we get like loads of comments going woo and loads of these smiles and love hearts and fireworks and post post your favorite emoji. Do that. Do that. Loads of them. Flood the comments because here she is. It is Alexandra. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. How are you? I am very, very well. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. No, thank you for asking me. It was so good. <laughs> I've been excited for this. Yeah, are you excited? Yeah, 
Very. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, well, here we go. Going to start off straight away. I'm going to throw you in the, in the in at the deep end. Okay. Because we're going to play a little game. Are you ready to play the game? Yeah, my heart's going so fast. Is Linda? Is Linda's favorite game this as well? She loves hearing some of the answers. But here we go, guys. It's game time. That's right, it is the five second rule. Now, for those who don't know, and Alexandra has no idea about this at all, but for those who don't know, the five second rule is a game that I play with all of my guests. And it is a game, it's a very lighthearted game. We have fun with it. And I'm sure Linda will, will be boosting these comments now and going, oh my God, it's so funny, I can't wait. Um, but yes, it's a game that I play with all of my guests where they have to name three things in five seconds. It is as easy as that okay so if i say for example name three supermarkets you'll be able to say three supermarket names yeah. in five seconds and it's as yeah. simple as that okay, okay? Mm -hmm. easy right you ready you ready to play yeah cool here we go then so question one okay fyi just say the things at the top of your head if they're funny they're funny it's fine because you you, like, you you'll understand We've had some really, really, <laughs> some some interesting answers on this show. But here we go. Let's go. Question number one. Name three things you do when no one is watching. Uh, sing, dance. <laughs> sing, dance, poop. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. <laughs> Name three famous bold people. Bold people. Bold. Lucas. Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah, you got two out of three, so that's it's still good, it's still good, it's still good. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt Matt Lucas and Mr. Potato Head, who would have been your third? Um, I can't think of any bold people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you've got... Uh, hang on, I'm trying to think now. You've got him from the Crystal Maze, Mitt Richard, something or other. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Richard O'Brien. That's it. <laughs> somebody, will put, somebody will put in in the comments now. Like, Richard O'Brien! <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, uh, last one. Name three things you'll find... In your bedroom, a bed, um, a New York picture, and uh, makeup. Well done, well done. Linda said Kojak. Oh yeah. There you go. And that's it. That's the end. You had fun. Yeah. <laughs> breathe and breathe. I was an improv at first school again. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Right. Okay. It's, as I say, it's just a fun game. It's just something just to break the ice and just make you feel a little bit welcome and welcome you into Spill It. So welcome to Spill It. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I always start with one question. Now, what I wanted to do just before we go into that question, now we met by chance, didn't we? We met, um, we were both doing a life coaching uh, course. It was an online course, uh, like an introductory course. And we met per chance because we were put, they separated like these hundreds of people that were on this one call into miniature rooms of like three or four people. And you happened to be in the same call, like the same room as me. And you mentioned yeah. about the fact that you were an endo warrior. And I was like, I've heard of endometriosis. I used to work with somebody who had endometriosis. It's something that I'm familiar with, but I know that it's a lot more people are becoming a lot more aware of it now. Yeah. And I thought this is somebody who's got the head screwed on that needs to come on to my show and Whoa. talk about endometriosis. Like from, from as soon as I saw it, as soon as I saw you, and as soon as you started speaking, I was like, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and here we are today and you're on the show. Thank you. I know. We, could, we just connected like that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Here is your first question from me. Who is Alexandra? Okay, so Alexandra is now a transformation coach for endometriosis, seeing that I have endometriosis myself. Um, 
so yeah so i'm just i'm still learning because i think endometriosis is that complex even doctors don't really understand it um and yeah i'm just here to support other women be heard be seen and hold space for them as well as train them if i can lovely well so putting it down into because there there'll be people who are watching who have no idea what endometriosis is or like me they've heard someone talking about it and they don't really know like enough to have a full conversation um and i know obviously you're still learning yourself and people are still learning like you know as you said with doctors and things like that but how can you explain what endometriosis is and how does it affect people okay so there's a scientific way to explain it and I'm not the most academic so the way I explain it is in a fun way so people can understand it especially if they don't have it so the way I explain it to I call endo muggles people who don't have endometriosis <laughs> um, <laughs> is that your womb or the lining of the womb basically grows inside out so it grows in parts of the body it's not meant to grow and then that starts to act as a velcro so it then starts to stick your womb to other areas of the body so it sticks to the bowel it can stick to the lungs to the diaphragm um yeah and it's even been found in like parts of the brain obviously your brain doesn't stick to your womb it doesn't move, but like it found like, the tissue gets stuck in different places and it acts like a velcro wow yeah and that's, and that's obviously the bottom that's just like the a tiny layer there's like loads more layers to it but yeah uh, and that's that sounds very painful oh it is yeah like I'm, I'm imagining now velcro like pulling apart and exactly Ow. Yeah. yeah yeah um yeah okay so tell them tell me tell everybody how how like how, how did you find out that you had endometriosis how old were you when did it start so this is where it gets tricky. So because there's so many layers, there's that. So I break up into five parts. So I have like the, the sassy five. Hi, by oh, the way, other endometriosis warriors. I've not seen you in the comments just there. There's five states. There's chronic inflammation. Um, there's fatigue. There's a hormone imbalance. There is. Let me just check my notes because I always forget the last two. The hormone imbalance, the physical pain, inflammation, fatigue, and then mental health. That's how I break it up. And um, so when I was 11. I, this is going to be FY, um, what's it called? Too much information, but hey ho. When I was 11, I started my period, which is quite young for a girl to start their period. And everyone thinks it's a period problem, but it's not because very rare cases men can get endometriosis, which shows. Oh, wow. It, yeah, it's really, really rare, but it just shows it's not a, a womb condition. Um, so, anyway, so I was 11 when I started my period. Um, it was always really painful. My mum and my sister, you know, they never had pain or a lot of people in my family, the women, didn't have pain. Um, I was fainting a lot. So I started fainting from when I was in high school. And then it started like once a month. So people didn't really, they were like, oh, she's just a girl, it's her age. And then when I got fast forward to uni and college, I was fainting twice a day. So I got taken to cardiology um, at Broad Green and at um, some of the hospital, um, for young kids, I can't remember what it's called. So I got taken to Broad Green and then I got taken to check my brain, the neurology side. They were like, she's fine, she's got a brain, um, it worked, there's nothing wrong there. And it just got written off. Um, and it wasn't until four years ago that I got diagnosed. Um, but it's not been surgically diagnosed because I'm still waiting for surgery and it got put back um, because of lockdown, which a lot of people are finding a lot of endo warriors are really struggling right now because it's not because it's a condition that isn't life-threatening as such we're just getting kind of pushed back to the hand you know the back of the queue and it's um frustrating because it's because it's a chronic condition we're not and it's not well known like the, the same amount of women in the uk struggle with diabetes and they're getting help and it's a really because it's without sounding sexist because it's a shared condition I think it gets a lot more like airtime and a lot more social media time, whereas endometriosis is kind of like a taboo subject. And because there's so many layers, because we don't really know about it, like there's no um, there's no cure. We don't know what the cause is. We don't know if it's like that chicken and the egg. We don't know if it's the womb that starts because it's growing on the outside or whether it's because of an inflammation issue at first or a hormonal imbalance at first. We don't know what kind of starts it. Um so yeah, so that's my. I think I answered the question. I might have gone around the houses a little bit. <laughs> no, no. So, is 
it started obviously when you had the first period then um do you say in high school um so yeah oh, that's when you that's when the fainting happened started. so the reason why i was fainting was because the the pain was that um high my body couldn't hack it so it just kind of like checked out and it was like no i can't handle this wow. um so going back to high school then and obviously <laughs> you said that like people were just looking at it as oh you, you just growing up if you will i mean there's there's a there's a clear difference between somebody going through hormones and somebody fainting yeah. um I, I was nothing really done like what because obviously you've only just been recently di like diagnosed if you will but not surgically diagnosed so what what has been going on like through school and beyond like how have people been reacting is it something that you had a feeling that it might be this or did you just have no idea so um yeah so so because i was fainting quite a lot and that because i was quite young so when i go to the doctors i see a specialist and they wouldn't actually speak to me they'd talk through my mum at me and like well she feel so it didn't get because i was a kid and i didn't really know what was going on in my own body i couldn't really help with my own diagnosis um and then it wasn't until so because your hormones are coming up and down and i was hitting puberty so it was kind of equal in itself out because basically when you've got a you're really estrogen dominant um, and then estrogen turns other so we've got all your sex hormones which is testosterone progesterone and estrogen it then starts turning uh, testosterone into estrogen, so we're becoming more and more and more dominant. So they were levering themselves out and then going out of whack again. And then it wasn't until I returned home from studying in New York and I came back and I was reading, I think I was reading or watching something and it said about endometriosis and it said these certain symptoms that I had, it was like, you know, pain during sex, um, really painful periods I was on I'd bled for like three months once and it was like non-stop which is obviously crazy didn't really say about the fainting it said about different issues and I was like that's me so I took it to my gynecologist again and I was like I think I've got this and she was like mm, you're too young to have it and I was like well I'm, I'm, I was 23 at the time I was like it's not really that young actually to have endometriosis and you had to really I had to really fight to get that and like I say even now because the surgery has been pushed back I've still not got the surgical one but because I've had um, things like a ruptured ovary um, which usually means you've got about stage three so there's four stages of endo usually that's stage three so yeah that is mental and <laughs> I, I can't I, it can't stick in my in my head like so when you are going through um a bad I don't I don't I don't know I don't, I don't know the right way to say it but when you're having like a hard time for if you're in a lot of pain and things like that mm -hmm. yes how do you cope with something like that so first it is hard because when you're in a flare-up obviously when you're first going through it, you don't really know what it is and you're having flare ups and it feels like there's so many different symptoms. So I know we were talking on my Facebook today about what strange symptoms do you think you've had that you didn't think were related to endo, but weren't. So I used to get like ulcers and I'd be like, well, that's obviously a dentist thing. And it wasn't, it was because my hormones are out of whack and I was run down that my endo had made that. Um, so when you're in a flare up, it is just about learning how to manage the pain. So now I'm a lot better at managing pain, whether my threshold's just gone up. <laughs> and a lot of, I bet a lot of um, people in the comments can relate to this. So as, you, as you get older, you kind of know where your limits are. It's about setting a lot of boundaries for yourself. It's about being really strict with the routine. Um, I've, I've made a lot of lifestyle changes to my diet, to my exercise. And it was hard because, because I used to be in theater school, so I was a dancer. I was training six days a week and that was actually partly making my endo worse because I was overtraining. So now, now I'm a PT and a transformation coach. I actually know how good active rest is. And I actually tell, which sounds counterintuitive for a PT. I'm like, whoa, calm it down, rest yourself, do something that's a bit more like pull it back because if you're going to push it forward, you're going to knock on that effect and bring on a flare and make it worse. So you actually need to pull back, which is hard sometimes to do. So you mentioned that you're a um, transformation coach, and you, uh, you, you've used you've thrown over the thrown around the term um, endo warrior as well. Yeah. Um, basically, can you just tell people who might not know what an endo warrior is? How, how what where does that term come from? 
So there's a lot of them um, with any chronic condition. So like, um, have you heard of Lyme disease? Yes. Well, I know a little bit about, but not a, not that much. But any, with any chronic con like condition, they usually like coin the term warrior. So it basically means because you're always fighting against your own body most of the time, you become like this warrior. Like you've got like this inner warrior. All the stuff like um goddesses kind of use quite a lot which I quite like as well because sometimes people can find warrior quite triggering I don't mind it but it sounds a bit like um a bit feisty and maybe a bit masculine so I don't mind it but endo warrior whatever you like the spoony which is another one okay cool um and then obviously with the transformation coach and things like that so I, I you coach or want to coach my understanding is obviously people who are dealing with endometriosis where did that passion or drive come from so it was from as i was getting worse and i think the biggest um like barrier you have is remembering what you could do so i was a dancer and i was dancing six days a week and it didn't used to bother me and i think a lot of other people get this like you remember you you're more you don't compare yourself to other people you kind of get over that pretty quick when you've got a chronic condition it's comparing yourself to your past self it's like well I used to be able to do that so why can't I do it now so it's it came from that and I was like I, I know I still want to be active because I've always been active I like like you know, walking and working out and I want other women to feel like they can do it as well because I think it's so easy when you've got a chronic condition to feel like you, you can't do it you're unmotivated like there's a mental health side it's massive and I think the more I work with clients even without endo um it's more of a psychological shift. It's never about really like I want to lose weight for a holiday isn't really enough to get you to change your lifestyle. It's got to be like a really deep reason why you want to change and to make yourself better and to just to learn to manage it. If you can get through every single day, it's just learning about that. And I just want to help women feel like because I've been there when you feel like you're at rock bottom. It's the worst place. I, I wish no one else had to go through it. But so that's where that kind of that burning passion came from to become an endo warrior coach i absolutely love that with regard you touched on um something that i'm going to bring back to as well um the mental health side of things and then there was something earlier on that you mentioned that um it can uh, you know it, it affects you uh, during your sex life and things like that and i wanted to yeah. bring those two together how if you can describe how it actually uh, and, and go as go as deep as you want to how does it affect uh, or how can it affect people's mental health and then also uh, people's sexual activity as well yeah um yeah it can affect but we actually had a uh, in my free group we um got someone in to talk about like relationship sides and intimacy sides because it can make you feel like so a woman you want to feel like sexy and you want to feel you know free and you want to feel body confident and when when it's affecting your sex life or you know or even if you've got the most, um, you know, supportive partner, supportive partner, you still kind of you take it on yourself. You feel guilty. You feel bad about yourself, which then impacts your mental health. And it's just, you know, I've been there where I was quite low. A couple of this is before I kind of got my diagnosis. I still don't really know what it was. There's a thing called medical gaslighting. So where doctors will tell you there's nothing wrong with you so that whole when I was growing up and I was being told you know it's not cardiology so you're making it up it's not this so you're making it up you're too young to have that and you start you start to question your own kind of like saying say, sanity is that the word <laughs> sanity it is yeah yeah so you get like medical gaslighting you start to question yourself you start to be like well it's just me because people don't talk about it that much so like all these end of warriors feel like they're on their own and um yeah it can impact and I was so low I you know I had to go to the doctors to get help for mental health reasons you know on antidepressants um and that's what I mean it's like a, it, people think it's just to do with the womb and it's a whole body mind spirit um yeah whole body condition that's it, it, it's like it, I want to the the word that I want to say it's remarkable but I know that that's not the correct word. Like, I, I don't mean it as a, oh my God, that's remarkable. I love it. Um, but like, it's it's mind blowing. Like just that this is happening to people. And firstly, they're not being diagnosed for many, many years, but then also with the effect that it has on people's mental health and their relationships and 
how they are with other people, how they interact with other people and absolutely everything. Like just this, this one condition can affect so many different things. That's what I find remarkable. Um, in like a more negative kind of connotation, remarkable. Um, I don't, you know, it, it's it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Uh, Pips put a comment there as well. It makes you feel lonely. Um, and c can you relate to that? Do, does it make you feel lonely? Yeah, there was a point because I think a lot of there's obviously different stages of it. So when I think when you first get diagnosed, you kind of believe in a way that you've got the diagnosis, but then you feel totally alone, and then you go through a phase of kind of pushing everyone away I know that I have a couple of boundaries like I won't I won't go out I've got that kind of social because I used to faint so I don't like that feeling of being out of control and you get things like again it's going to sound quite graphic but sometimes when you bleed I used to bleed through my, my tampon through my towel through my jeans so it looked like I'd wet myself in blood it looked like a murder scene like it didn't look, and, and, and you don't want to go out. You feel so scared to go out. You feel like you're going to get judged. And it impacts you. You turn into a bit of a hermit. And then sometimes you get some friends. Like luckily now I don't have any of these friends because I've, I've got better friends that are supporting us. But if you don't want to go out and people are like, oh, you're so boring. Or you, you bail because you've got fatigue or you're not well. Because it comes on like that. You could be fine one hour. And then in half an hour, you could just go to, you know, from 10 to 1. And people are like, oh, you're a bailer. Oh, you're free, like you're flaky. And it's like, no, no, that's not. I'm not a bailer. The condition sometimes makes me like that. But I, am a, as a person, a quite reliable person. And I'm quite a loyal person. And I say, if you've got friends like that, then I'm off. <laughs> so I was literally about to say that as well. Like... If, guys, if you've got if you've got friends that are like that, regardless if you're suffering with something or not, if you've got friends that are like that and and proper put you down because of the fact that you the, you do not want to do something, get rid, get rid, make new friends. Mm -hmm. I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, this, yeah, I, I absolutely love this conversation, and and, and we're we're we're, we're going to talk more. Uh, I'm going to introduce um, a video that you sent me that we're going to play because you. Um, help a lot of people with regards to their endometriosis through exercise as well. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you, yeah, just explain how exercise can really help and all of that. Lot. So exercise has got so many benefits, but towards endometriosis. So one um, is that it boosts your mood, which is great. So we've talked about the mental health. It does. It's a natural like mood booster. Number two is not many people know is that when you're starting to exercise, you release like this opioid like chemical, which is basically like a natural painkiller. So instead of taking, because we do take a lot of painkillers sometimes, like I've been on uh, morphine and cocodamol. Um, wow. So opioid kind of uh, painkiller. You've got a natural basically pharmacy built inside your body that you've just got to tap away with exercise so that's quite I, I love that fact I always I'm like oh that's cool um obviously as I've mentioned before it's a um estrogen dominant disease so by exercising you're actually bringing that and pulling that back so you're making your hormones level back out and uh, you're building strength so a lot of women um we hold tension in our womb which is a weird thing to do whether that's like trauma or pain we hold a lot of tension in our room so we, we've got to kind of relax it through exercise certain exercises and then build up that strength because you can get back pain you can get kind of flare up so it's just taking back it's just about relaxing which sounds strange when you say strength training or cardio but relaxing the muscles to then build them back up in the right way rather than holding tension yeah we're going to play this video and yeah it explains a lot really but here we go here's the video <laughs> and these are the different exercises that you can do yeah so this is a lot of strength uh exercising it's like clean and presses so most of them are to help with um supporting your back and strengthening the back it's to work like your glutes so a lot of women who have um 
uh, pain in the back or pain in the abdominals is because we're obviously we're holding this tension from the pain, but then you want to release that. And what you want to do is build your glutes because your glutes are usually underdeveloped because you're taking pain, like kind of in the front area or in your quads, because we're like in this kind of fetal position most of the time when we're in a flare, because you're taking more of that there, you, you, you get in glute atrophy, which is where your glute shrinks. So you want to build the strength back up in your booty. <laughs> yeah. and kind of, JLO booty, but also it's it's functional and it helps um, take the pain away. Hmm. Uh, Dan Danielle's uh, put a comment as well. Uh, I would have to take ta uh, take time off work and then discuss my endo with a manager. And I can I can imagine that that conversation is, is isn't exactly considering the fact that it's not very well known. Yeah, you're then having to tell them that there's something wrong, but then also got into what endo is. Have Have you had any experience with that? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, I um had it was quite recently, actually. So long story short, I got moved from one site in lockdown to a different site. So I was working with different managers. My managers at my site was amazing with my endometriosis. And if you know, we work on flexi time. So if anyone's here, ask for flexi time if it's really bothering you. Um, but anyway, I went to a different site with a different manager. It was a male manager. He didn't really either believe how bad it was. Um, I ended up fainting in a, a toilet and they left me for 45 minutes. He then told me, proceeded to tell me it was my fault because I didn't tell them I wasn't feeling well and I did. <laughs> and then um, and then I was off work for like a week trying to get over that. He was going around to women and being like, what's endometriosis? Is it really that bad? And I was like, "That you shouldn't be talking about my condition, my personal no. condition, to other people because it's, it's so personal. And I was like, you're basically talking about my womb and other parts to other people and it's not on, it's, yeah. So I get That's it. Hot. Yeah, talking to managers is bad, especially when it's like males and they don't quite, you know, some male managers just don't really, yeah. That's <laughs> such a shame. That... It's all for everyone when you've got to do it. It's, it's horrible. Like, this, this, like I, I genuinely feel like that the the this this other world that I'm kind of peering into at the minute. And I'm getting like a glimpse of like the 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 top of it, but obviously there's going to be so many more layers underneath that. Guys, if you've got any questions for Alexandra, please put them in the comments as well. And um, talk about your experiences and things like that. We'll interact with as many as we can do throughout this episode, and um, because I'm 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 learning as well. So you know, your comments will help educate me. <laughs> With regards to um, what you do with the with the coaching side of things and the exercising, where what has been the reception of, of, of that? It's been really, it's been really eye opening because it is hard, like a lot of people are very tentative to start exercising or they kind of go, "Well, it's your job, so you're gonna say that." Um, and it is hard because I've come to the other side, so it is it is in a way easier for me to say it, but. Um, I also got a qualification in mental health because like it's such an important like I said before like fitness isn't just about looking good and making your body you know from a dress size down it's not just about that there's a psychological shift that you've got to go through and with the mental health uh, side I was like I want that so I can support people through the mindset side as well not just not just in fitness just with dealing with this condition um so that's been, and I mean, every day, like every single person, as everyone will say in the comments, there's no two people have the same endo. So even though I know a lot about it and I'm constantly doing more research, it's good to work with different people because then you can find out exactly how they react to something, which is going to work for somebody else, but part of that might. So it's like, it's like having a thousand piece jigsaw, a rough terrain, and parts of the jigsaw's 3D. <laughs> so it's like doing. <laughs> Different pieces um it's so good and like it's it makes my job so much worthwhile when when you see women come through it and they can be so nervous at first and I totally get it and you, you just want to you just want to be there for them when you see that transformation and even if it's just like do you know what I can't cure you there's no cure I can't quite cure you but if I can help you manage this better even if it's for one day two days it's for a month then that's when um yeah that's that's why i do it <laughs> bless I, I love that Le uh, leela has asked what foods do you recommend to help the condition oh i love this question so there's a lot of different i hate the word diet don't ever go on a diet 
go on. So without going too much into it, because we won't have time, look at endocrine. That's the first one that I tell all my clients to do. So endocrine, is, endocrine sorry, lifestyle or diet is basically just clean eating. So you take out all processed foods. You, you want to kind of avoid anything in a packet, which I know is ridiculously hard to do at first, but try um, starting your day with protein or fruit or veg. That's what you want to do. And any carbs, you just want them natural carbs. You want brown, whole grain, whole meal carbs. Vegetables count as carbs. Not a lot of people know that. So get loads of veg. You want nice green. You want greens. You want natural. That's the best thing. Also, if that's not kind of getting you where you need to go, you need to look at stuff like um, gluten-free, which can help. Um, dairy free because that's going to pull you back away from the estrogen dominance and then if it's still really really bad look at low FODMAP but you're going to need a dietitian or a nutritionist for that there you go <laughs> now Liz, uh said something she's put a comment here and we're gonna uh, I'm going to ask your uh, ask you a question in relation to this so Natalie has said endo makes you feel lonely and um, I've lost a lot of friends to it now the question that I want to link in with this is there will be people out there who are going through this, who have been through this, or um, are maybe worried that their daughter or even their son, as you say, it's very, very rare that, uh, to, to happen with it with the male, but um, their, their, their son might be going through it or, or worried that, about the future. What advice would you give to people who are uh, going through this or wanting to support people going through this? So if you are going through it, definitely find a really good support group um some friends like the, i've met so many people especially in lockdown um so many endo warriors who i speak to on a daily basis um obviously be careful there's some groups that are kind of not regulated so if you're asking for advice just be careful i've got my own group if you want to join that i'll tell you about that later on um but yeah join a group find friends that you really trust and that respect your boundaries like don't be afraid to make boundaries if they aren't respectful of those boundaries get rid of like just get it's hard i know when you've got a history of friends it feels like a breakup but just be strong and you've got me <laughs> you've got us you've got us definitely uh, just find out just educate yourself and just talk and hold space for those people let them just let them express Pip has put a comment as well. I'm really interested in trying some exercise to help with endometriosis uh, in my back. Yes, Pip. I think Pip was on my um, store on my what was it live before, and I think you're suffering from sciatica. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to send you some stretches for sciatica. But yeah, so basically, when you get um, back pain, the nerve starts to press on your sciatic nerve, which then shoots pain down your leg. Um, but yeah, so it's just like finding little exercises. It depends, obviously, how bad your sciatica is. Um, but we can look at like because a lot of them you kind of need to get on the floor and they're kind of hard positions to get into. But we can have a look at doing them from seated and lay down and stuff. Nice. Danielle's uh, left a comment here. I had surgery in December to have endo removed from my bowel. My bowel was completely covered and out of place. It was also on my bladder left side and returned to my womb. I had it removed from my womb in 2011. Wow. And then she's also mentioned as well, soya should also be avoided. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Can, can, um, what's the word? Can cause inflammation in some people. It depends on how bad you are. And it's, it's sort of like IBS type, or if you've got SIBO, which is, we'll go into that another time. But yeah, soya can, yeah, irritate some people. It's all right with some but not us. Nice. Okay. Well, we are coming towards the end. The, the time flies and we could literally sit here and talk so for so much longer about absolutely everything else. Um, is there anything that we haven't covered or haven't talked about that you would like the opportunity to uh, talk about now? Um, yes. I would just like to let people know that because it's this month is endometriosis awareness. Month. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know. know. I didn't even know that. How? How? Yeah. Well. <laughs> that timing is. Right. I love it. <laughs> okay, so tell. So on this, uh, just before you 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 mentioned your thing, tell everybody um, about Endometriosis Month. So Endometriosis Awareness Month is just that it brings um, awareness <laughs> to the condition. Um, so a lot of people kind of do challenges. 
Uh, we take each day and we kind of diff talk about different things. So I think on day one, I said, introduce yourself, but introduce you, not with your endometriosis. Because, you know, when we have a chronic condition, we kind of tie that into ourselves and we forget the person we was before we kind of had it. So we look at that. Um, today we we're talking about random kind of symptoms that we get that we didn't think anyone else had, just so you know you're not alone. Um, we're doing all the different things, but on the 12th, of uh, March, I don't know why I just had to do this, but hey ho! On the twelfth of March, I'm going to do a sponsored twelve hour workout <laughs> live. Wow! <on> yeah, <laughs> I got inspired, but you know Joe Wicks, he yes. did a twenty four hour one. I was like, "There's no way I'll get through twenty four hours with with endo," <laughs> but <laughs> he inspired me, and I was like, "I'm going to do it on the twelfth for twelve hours, and we're going to raise money for Endometriosis UK, and people can join in." So I'm going to go live on my Facebook profile on my Instagram and if people want to join in, it's going to be on Zoom, they can come and just join in the class as well for free and keep me company for the <laughs> yeah, for the whole time. That, one, <laughs> that is absolutely me. I absolutely love that. If you can, uh, so that's on the 12th, is it? Yeah. Um, if you can send me some links, what I will do is that we will post them out onto the Spill It website and obviously the right. Spill It page as well and try and get some people in there and supporting you on the 12th because I think that's just – inspirational and that's one of the that's one, that's one of the key points about spill it it's about connecting people together which obviously on the 12th it will be doing it's about inspiring other people and also getting people learning and i think that this episode has absolutely done that and as well on the 12th we will do obviously what we can do to support you because it's absolutely amazing um was there anything else that you wanted to talk about while you've got the while you've got the floor i think that was it um yeah just if you if you feel like you want like if you're connected and you want support and you feel like you are feeling lonely i want you to come into my group um it's a the endo warrior coach for the, oh, what's it? i think it's in my link tree <laughs> it's in there. join the facebook group <laughs> but yeah because we have a little community there and i'd love to the people who've spoken on here um so like Pip and natalie and danielle i think some of you are already in the group but yeah just come and join us because it's just a nice we can build a little tribe of endo goddesses <laughs> love it i'm gonna ask you that, this and i know obviously you you kind of forgot it but we're going to talk about where people can find you so don't worry about specifically the website but where can people find you so um you can find me at yeah, instagram facebook usually i'm hanging out there the mostly um and you can find that i think on your website there's my link tree with all the links in there and there's like a there's also a free walk-in workout so if you feel like weights training and everything's a bit too much there's a free workout on there with a free app and a free ebook that you can just download for free <laughs> lovely well that does roughly take us to the end of the show Have you had fun i've had so much fun i don't want to go <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that every week i'm always like oh, i don't want to disconnect i just want to stay here and talk to people <laughs> But it all good things must come to an end. And also, not only that, you no doubt will be invited to come back onto the show because you've got an open invite. You can come back whenever you want to and do another do another episode. There's also other stuff, other stuff that I have planned, uh, which will all be revealed in the future, guys. And you just have to stay tuned for that. Yay! Have you got any final words? for people a bit of final motivation and then what we'll do is it will finish with your quote so just a final this is your message from me just remember if you ever feel like you can't do it remember that up to this point you've had a hundred percent success rate so you can do anything oh my god i love that, Isn't that cheesy <laughs> i absolutely love that i genuinely love that that is amazing <laughs> I, I genuinely love that. You're going to have to message me that because <laughs> I genuinely love it. Why? Okay. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll discuss about this after the show. But anyway, I absolutely love that. I'm bringing me close to tears here. At the end of every show, I give my guests the opportunity to give a quote, and it can be something that they stand by, live by. It can be something that they've heard that they just really like. It could be something that they've made up, that they just want to get out there into the big wide world. It is up to you. But have you got a quote for the watchers and listeners of Spill It, the show and podcast that they can take away from today's episode? Yes, it is. And I have paraphrased this quote, but it's your story is somebody else's survival guide. 
Hello, Vlad. Can you just give a quick explanation of what that quote means to you? So basically, there's someone out there struggling, and just by you being brave enough to share your story, you could actually save that person a lot of a lot of hurt or a lot of heartache. Love that. Absolutely love it. Right. Well, that does take us to to our end. I'm going to close up the show, I, uh, and you can wave your goodbyes and say your final message to people. Thank you so much. We've had Natalie, Pip and Daniela. I think it was a couple of other people. But I just want to quickly mention Pip. She said her dad's company are raising awareness for endometriosis. Super dad. Love there that. we go. Super dad. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. No, thank you for asking me. As, the, like, the, as soon as that message came through off you, I was buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt we're going to connect again in the future, uh, but we will we will discuss that at another point. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Wow! 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 What an amazing episode! I'm sure you'll you will agree that this was an absolutely epic episode. Thank you so much to absolutely every single person who has come in, who has shared it, who has talked about it, who has left comments, who has interacted with the show. It's phenomenal. Thank you so much for your support. Okay. Next week's show, we have got a, a good show, actually. So next week's show is the official Spill It Takeover, where I will not be here. It'll be another host. Another host is taking over Spill It. Ah! Will they do a better job than me? Who knows? Will I have to hire them? Probably. Well, there you go. It is Matt. Matt Kin, who was on the show a few weeks ago, he is coming back to take over Spill It on his own show. Absolutely epic. After that, we have got me again. I will be back for a St. Patrick's Day special with really, really good friend of mine, Michael Whiteford, as we are talking about the political side of things to St. Patrick's Day, how... um appropriate cultural appropriation has been involved with obviously the St. Patrick's Day and all that. There's so much thing that, that we're going to be talking about. And also we're going to be having a St. Paddy's Day drink. That's the whole point as well. After that, we will have Jonathan Simpson will be returning back to the show. He does the That Life podcast and also does That Life clothing. He came on the show just before Christmas and he will be taking over Spill It to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. And then to close up March, we will be finishing off with DJ Connie Von D as she comes on the show. She is the host of the radio show Fermium. She'll be on the show to take over and talk about everything that she wants to talk about on Wednesday, the 31st of March. And then that will be the end of season one. But I don't leave you there because there's going to be one more, one more episode to celebrate everything to do with Spill It and how far we've come since the beginning of season one. We are having a season one party with none other than Dan Sprague, social media influencer, and also actor Adam Oakley, who appeared in Hollyoaks. They will be coming on the show to do a Spill It season one finale party on Saturday, the 3rd of April. It is a late night episode. It starts at 10 p.m. because there's going to be drinks involved and games involved and all of that lot. It's going to be absolutely epic, and I really hope that you guys can come along to that. Don't forget to check out my new website, www.spillit.uk. If you would like to follow Alexandra, all you have to do is go onto my website. There is a section there where you can check the guests and you can follow the guests. Uh, just click that button. It'll take you directly to their link tree or their social media platforms where you can follow them and get in touch. My name is Marcus Wright. And when I am not doing this podcast, because this podcast takes up whole, half of my life. But when I am not doing this podcast, I run a dance exercise class right here on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash dance expressed. And we are normally outdoors. Well, we're normally out of the house. Because of lockdown, I'm having to do this indoors. And what I have done since the very, very first lockdown, well back in uh, April of 2020, I have been doing Facebook Lives completely free for anybody to jump on and do dance exercise classes. We have got guests, uh, well, well, not guests, we have people joining in from all over the world, actually, now, 
jumping on and doing the dance exercise classes completely free of charge. So you are more than welcome to come along to that. It runs every Tuesday and every Thursday. If you're wanting to support me and support the work that I do, then you can. There are three ways that you can support me. First, there is merch. You can buy merch. I have merch. So there are T-shirts available with this lovely Spillet logo there. It's a little tidal wave of tea. And uh, I have that on T-shirts and on hoodies. And I also have beanie hats on the way as well. So merch is going to be available. You can support me by getting merch. There is also... Now, this has changed because it used to be buymeacoffee.com, but now Patreon is live. Patreon is live, which means that you'll be able to become an official Patreon supporter, which means that you get bonus content. You get extra competitions. You get discount on merch. You get extra episodes. You get absolutely everything else. It's so, so, so cool. And then lastly, to support me, you can just leave a review. It's not all about the monies. You can just leave a review. All you have to do is head over to the Facebook page. This is probably where the majority of people are watching it anyway. We'll just head over to the Facebook page and leave me a review. You have no idea how much that means when you leave a review. It does so much help for this show, for this platform to boost it up. So make sure that you do head over to the Facebook page and leave a review. And if you are listening to this via Apple Podcasts, Hello. But also, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts as well. <sighs> and that's it. And that is the end of the show. Pip says, thank you so much for doing this. No problem, Pip. It's been absolutely epic. Thank you so much. And Natalie says, thank you from all of us, uh, all us Endo community for doing this. Not a problem. Happy Endo Awareness Month to all of you Endo Warriors, Endo Goddesses, because that's what you are. You are warrior goddesses. Like both both of them terms put together. Like forget warrior being masculine. No, we don't deal with that. That's patriarchal. We don't deal with that. Xena, the warrior princess, is an amazing person, and she's a legend. You are all Xena warrior princesses, right? And that <laughs> is it from me. Thank you so much for joining in, and until next time. Bye for now.